Hello, thanks for listening to episode two of Acting Related, the MySight.actor podcast. I'm Frank Prendergast, and you're listening to part two of a conversation with director Sean O'Connor, where we'll be chatting about his latest award-winning short, A White Horse, how he finds actors for his projects, and the importance of being genuine and not filtering your enthusiasm when networking. So, let's chat. So your latest short, A White Horse, uh, has been doing brilliantly, I think, four awards, uh, I, and, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and one of them, one of them means that uh, it's now an Oscar qualifying short, the the best Irish short in foil. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, top prize at a, um, an Oscar qualifying film festival and BAFTA as well. Um, right. I guess the big question is, are the Oscars going to happen? Very good question. Yeah, uh, can can is in massive Zoom call anyone? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's very interesting. I mean, the uh, I mean, get, get, get back to the film in a minute. But that whole thing of like we were supposed to be flying out to Los Angeles like next week for the North American premiere of the film at the Newport Beach Film Festival. Right. So let's try back. Is can I mean, I mean, oh my god, through the list of film festivals, everything is cancelled. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and. Yeah, with no kind of knowledge of when it's going to start back up, but the yeah. but the Oscars are is it February I believe, um. So hopefully, right. things, but 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 we don't we don't know. I mean, like there's a yeah. possibly the like mass gatherings will not be kosher yeah. for quite some time. <clears throat> yeah, who knows? But nonetheless, I mean, f- fantastic to be, uh, fantastic to be on that on that list. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're we're. Like we, we're so we're delighted with we're 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 really happy with how the film's been received. Like we, uh, um, like we made it with the the uh, Screen Directors Guild of Ireland's um, Ari Shorts program last year. Uh, sorry, Ari Take program. So basically, they give you like an Ari um, uh, cinema camera and uh, a set of lights to go and make an absolutely gorgeous piece. Um, but you have to uh, you know uh, submit the script and kind of. Um, uh, put the basically put the production together yourself. So I worked with a uh, producer, Sinead Barry, who uh, I'd met through um, a mutual friend, Niall Owens. She she was like the production manager on Vivarium and um, uh, loads of um, big Irish features. But I want to get into right. production, so we worked on worked on that based on a script written by Paul Cahill, um, which we we actually put together as a um, a proof of concept for a feature film or TV show. And uh, just kind of want like a ten minute window into the world of uh, with the 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 the, the show or the the feature is about um, uh, uh, life in a psychiatric hospital learned in the nineteen seventies through the eyes of a young uh, of a, a teenage girl who has been put in um, be put in there because uh, her family discovered that she has homosexual tendencies. It's based on it's partially based on the story of Lou Reed, who had a similar experience. And was subjected to um, intensive bouts of electroconvulsive therapy, which damaged his short-term memory. Um, his sister only wrote about it um, quite recently, but it was it was kind of known anecdotally, um, even in New York at the time, um, or when he got to New York. But um, but yeah, so we just took like this ten-minute snippet out of that world, and uh, it's set, centered around like the, this girl having escaped from the hospital, re home, but her um, her short-term memory is destroyed because of what's happening. But it's all Play, it's played out through the conversation between her and her mother and kind of discovering why she's been put there um, uh, the, the, um, how to what degree are the family complicit in her being there um, you know what was her life like beforehand and all the rest of it but Paul there's a lot to kind of to, to convey so quickly but Paul wrote like a really really real script and we had like f- just phenomenal actors um, Amber DC uh, plays Bridget and uh, Cora Fenton plays the mother. Jack um, Jack Healy plays the father, and um, yeah, we just we, we we kind of put it together. We shot it in three days, uh, three different locations, and edited it, uh, edited and graded it super quickly. Had it in for the Galway Film Fla um, deadline like two weeks later, um, and then it just started winning a bunch of different things, which was Fantastic. which was great. But it was really, yeah. Yeah, and but it's 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 so interesting. Like with like with anything you make, like and, and, and I'm sure you kind of you have this experience as well. But like, 
you know, you, you make things that you put like, you know, loads and loads of time and effort into and then people don't respond to it. And then you kind of make something like this where you're under like so much time pressure. And because um, even though it was three days, like it was that was absolutely out of necessity for, for, for the, the location moves. Sure. Um, but we had it was completely unfunded. So we we, we kind of made it on a wing and a prayer and we, right. had, to, we had to edit it and get it out to Galway like um, with a sound mix and a grade. DC but even, within even that, I, I didn't, I actually, did, I didn't realize some of those details. So, I mean, that's quite incredible, really. And, and like, again, an ambitious thing to take on because it's set in the 70s with, yeah. without a budget. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's well, yeah. pretty phenomenal. It's pretty good. Yeah, we had, and we had a, um, a production designer, Kate Howard, who uh, runs the Retro Workshop, is it? Retro yeah. Workshop in, 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 in Cork City. And she basically, like... It was what she did for the budget was miraculous. Like, and, and she right. found a house, uh, a house um, that looked like it hadn't been touched since the nineteen seventies, but was up kept kept up kept very well. Um, guy named Donnie O'Brien, absolutely lovely guy. Let, let us have the house for the day. Um, but yeah, and there's something so edifying about you know um, making, as you were saying, it's making things like with your friends and colleagues and. Um, uh, being under creative pressure with strict time and budgetary parameters, and it's so lovely to have it, have it be received well, and you know, yeah. pick up awards yeah. and um, uh, but it was great. But it's all I get. But it's all the the subject matter is so so dark. It's it's so so intense. I'm not sure it's something I I would have been able to tackle in terms of the working with the actors on until now. You know, right. Um, certainly because I, I had done like loads of comedies and loads of kind of short sketches and things like that to do something with this level of um kind of emotional intensity um i felt that because of this turned to an ad for tom kibbe um, <laughs> because because of, of what i learned in the class like i was able to i had that vocabulary and i had that kind of i didn't i didn't feel like i needed to to shy away from like you know asking actors to, 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 to go to certain places and then to go, you know, go, go darker if you need to, if you need to do that. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, so it was, it was, it, it was, it was great and, and a great confidence boost as well for, for myself and, and for Paul as well, the, the, the writer. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not, I mean, you kind of think the you know, awards and stuff don't, don't matter. Like, and ultimately they, they, they don't like, but it is, it's lovely to. Absolutely. Yeah. Approval or the to not the yeah. approval the recognition to be, to, yeah yeah to to, to yeah. make something that's you know that, that gets appreciated like that is yeah. it's a lovely yeah. lovely thing to to have. You had worked with Jack Healy before. I had you worked with Cora before. Yes, Cora was in uh, Mary. Cora was in the previous. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I was just, I'm curious about how you. So uh, sorry, I, I was going to say, how did you find? Uh, Amber DC, because she gives a beautiful performance in it, by the way. Um, but uh, you hadn't worked with Amber before, I don't think, had you? No, no, we did. Um, oh, yeah. The other thing I did in the meantime was I directed a play. Yes, of Park course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant, brilliant writer, Kieran Collins. And uh, that that was another fantastic experience. Um, two, two weeks of intense, intense rehearsal with actors. Um fine-tuning performances and you know uh, but it was really wonderful but uh it was during it was when we're when we're in the rehearsals for that that we found out that we had gotten the sdgi thing so we had to cast it quite quickly but um i uh it was actually um katrina foley at the cork arts theater who i i asked because i because i said i don't like i don't know actors any actors around that age like you know um, because she's a Bridget's a, a a a teenage girl, and um, she just gave me a list of different of different possibilities. I looked through them. I contacted pretty much all of them. Asked them to send on showreels and CVs and such. Right. And then we just set we set up auditions. Um, in the actions in the same place that we were doing the um, the rehearsals uh, for the for the stage play, and uh, we just went in and um, I just set up a camera and I went through because it's the film is basically well like kind of three quarters of it is one scene it's one conversation 
so I was able to kind of like go through the conversation, record it, and I'd play the part of the mother and um, do two, two or three takes of it and and see to what degree the actor takes direction. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting though, because like usually pretty quickly you can kind of get a sense of like for something like this anyway, where there's like, there's quite a specific kind of emotional tone that needs to be hit um, and also like the character she needs to be kind of confused like and, and upset like and you're you know you should be able to get to that like by the kind of the th- like by the second or the or, or the third take and and if it's not there by then um th- uh, it's probably not the right actor for it like you know um but yeah we went through I think we, we probably did like seven or eight different auditions and um and then we found Amber and she was just like brilliant. Um I just responded so well to um so well to direction and um but she she was uh in she was in the uh the school of music at the time. Yeah uh, in the uh I don't mind know with the theatre degree, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she had that thing of being able to that theatrical thing of like really be able to kind of like project herself like and be be a huge presence like but also when i when i was saying to her like you know the like you cannot go like small enough with the performance because we will be right up in your face like right um so it's kind of conveying that like it's like like every little like every every kind of snatch of breath that you take every time you every glance you you, you make because uh, because you're feeling nervous like we'll pick up everything we'll pick up all of that like you don't need to project you don't need to but she responded to that immediately and uh, right. uh and and then you're kind of okay well she's she she uh i know but she had the performance in her like immediately but that was obvious but it was just kind of like f- funneling it down to a non-theatrical thing but she was sure. able to, she was able to do that like 100 percent as well she was she was amazing like yeah it's a really lovely performance yeah. 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 And so that was kind of a very specific route to find, I guess, an actor within a very specific age bracket. Yeah. How do you, what's your, what's your normal casting process or even like, do you, how do you, like, how do you discover actors in general? Uh, so in the past, what I, what I would have done, I mean, back when I was doing stuff with, uh, uh, with Ty Kiki and Cahoots, um, we were, I mean, I guess it was very lucky that like, Tig, um, with whom I made like loads of short films and sketches and stuff, he would have he would he was working in the he would have had a background in theater, um, so he he was often basically like the casting director and the on the older stuff like you know so he would have known immediately he was like okay this person this person this person will work for right. us I believe was like correct like so, um so I always so I still have that that pool of people to to draw on, um, and. Uh, I do have a ten. I do have a tendency to work with people again and again. Um, yeah, I find if someone's kind of right for a role and they're you know a good presence on set and they're enjoyable to work with, like then you know sure why wouldn't you? Like even Cora, yeah. Cora the last two films, like she, and she, I mean she plays a comedic role in Mary, and she's brilliant. Like she's yeah. one of the best things in the film. Like and then she's and then in A White Horse she is she plays a mother who has basically abandoned her daughter to. To the psychiatric to a psychiatric institution, possibly for life, you know, it is it is the opposite of comedic role, and she she yeah. knocks park like you know absolutely but, yeah. But I guess it's just that thing of seeing, kind of having, I guess, I guess knowing that an actor can do it, like, and that that they have the, yeah, that they they have that ability, but but for but for somebody of, of Cora or Amber's quality, it's 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 quite palpable immediately, um. But now, uh working with like people like Sinead or people with um uh people who would have, who would have had experience in the past like casting directors like you know and it's like okay it's, it's a much wider net and you can you're looking at um a lot of different uh potential um uh, options for us I do have a folder on on my computer that like every every single actor who has ever contacted me over the last 10 years I and, and uh, uh, or, or I've spoken to her at film festivals or whatever. I'll be like, yeah. send me your show reel, send me your CV, and I put it in this folder. And then when I'm working on a new project, I will go through each one of those and right. 
and, th- and think, okay, is this, is, is this person potentially right for it, you know? Sure, yeah. So um, do you get do you get approached directly, uh, like out of the blue, as it were, from by actors? Yeah, 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 for sure. And Brilliant. I think that's great. I mean, I remember, I remember reading ages ago, uh, I could have this wrong, but I think it was Killian Murphy. And I think he was talking about working with um, Ben Wheatley. Oh, yeah. And he was just saying, he reached out to him and he just said, I'd love to work with you. And he was saying, you know, that it, it, I can't remember what it was that had clicked with him, but he was just saying that, like, I think he read something somewhere else, some other actor who had, who had done something similar. And it was a real eye opener for him. And he was like, oh, I can, I can just contact people and say, I'd love to work with you. That's genius. Why didn't I think of that? And he did. And uh, I think, was, was it Free Fire? Was that? Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that. I actually haven't seen that one either. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, so I think that's, um, I, I guess I'm glad to hear that people reach out to you and just say, you know, I'd love to work with you. Oh my God, I, I, absolutely. But I mean, it's just, like at, at, at film festivals, like, I mean, I meet, I meet like producers or directors of photography or composers or whatever, like, and like, if I, and if, if I know their stuff and I like their stuff, like, if I don't go up to them and tell them, I'm a fan and I would like to work with you someday, then I've, then what's the point going to the, to the film sure. festival? Like yeah. it's, and it's yeah. a, it's an, it's an industry where people respond to that kind of, um, you know, there's, it's, it's the cliche of like, kind of like, like mingling at film festivals or like, like bring, bring loads of business cards, but like, this is, this is how it works. Like the guy who shot, um, the guy who shot a, a white horse, um, his name is Jas Foley. He's a phenomenal director of photography, like, like yeah. absolutely brilliant. And, um, uh, I met him at a networking thing in Dublin probably four years ago at this stage. And I took his card and he took my card and we went our separate ways. We met probably 50 other people that night or whatever. And then I bumped into him at, I think it was Fastnet, maybe two years later or something. And we recognized each other. We got chatting. Yeah. I'd seen stuff on his website because I checked out the card. Then we bumped each other at the Corkland Festival and we just ended up kind of having pints and like, and we hadn't worked together at all at this stage, but he had been familiar with my work in the meantime, I was familiar with his work. And then we just kind of said like, look, the next thing, the next thing we work on, we'll just work together. Like, you know, sure. You know, Brilliant. Yeah. 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 And I, I think that's, I mean, I think that's a really good point as well. Like you, the, the timeline that you've just outlined there, like it happens over years. Mm. And I think that the problem with, the whole kind of networking vibe is like, I think that is the perfect example of how, you know, how it all works and how you, you meet someone and like I've, I met Jas at uh, Fastnet mm. uh, a couple of years ago as well. And you can just, you know, you can just tell, oh, this is somebody that I would like to work with. Like mm. you can tell that there's a, you know, but I think then the problem uh, happens when people think that it's an immediate thing. And then there's a sense of urgency or a sense of desperation about the whole thing. And that's where the whole having all the millions of business cards and uh, that's where it all goes wrong, basically. Whereas if you take the if it's if it's the kind of the long game and it's like, well, who do I get on with here and who would I actually love to work with at some point in the maybe even distant future? um, That's when it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's. And it's just having that thing of, I think this kind of like that basic thing of like, we're all doing this because like, we love what we do, you know, and we like, like, I love movies, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I love, yeah. I love, like, I, you know, I'm, I watched a, a BBC thing from the 1970s the other night called Penda's Fen that was this, this full car thing we've been to watch for years, like, and there's like editing techniques in it that I'm like, God damn that's so clever like in these cuts to silence where where they're so kind of like jarring and i'm like can i use that in this like and and then i know there's people who there, there's like like friends of mine who i've met through film festivals who are into that specific genre of like you know wicker man era um, right. uh british folk horror like you know and i think that like when you're at film fest or when you're at festivals I mean, speaking specifically about film, like the same for theatre or whatever, like the, like it doesn't, it doesn't benefit you to kind of rein in that enthusiasm about anything. And, and in fact, like it's yeah. like, this, I mean, and I've, and I've, at times I've, I've met people who are like, like directors or whatever, who are like, you know, at the top of their, like the, like Irish directors at the top of their game, like Oscar nominated or whatever. And it's just like, if you can kind of, 
if you can bypass the 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 kind of the the, the starstruck thing and just and go straight to like oh my god I loved your film like and yeah there's there's a kind of that that kind of human connection thing is uh it kind of it kind of bypasses everything else like you know but that but that's yeah. but that, 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 and, that and just that as you said that shared enthusiasm for yeah. for film yeah 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 totally yeah. totally um like this i mean i can't like i can't shut up about film when i start talking about it like you know and <laughs> and that's but like that's not a bad thing like you know i shouldn't yeah. like if i if i get into a conversation with like um you know um again people at the very very top of their game like um i shouldn't need to rein that in and it's not it's not going to help me to do that either like you know um yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah that's and the, and those are the 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 people who are the most fun to meet at like festivals and such like and even with the even with actors it's um you know it's the it's the people you meet who have like who are like they've they've watched loads of films like and i mean if someone has watched a film that i've made like it's just it's made it makes my day like you know, sure. someone, someone says, oh, geez, I saw your film at Galway. I loved it. I'm like, that'll like knock me over with a feather. I love that. Like, you know, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. 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 Cool. And, 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 and it, and it, and it shows, it, dis- it shows a kind of a, um, I guess, a, a, a passion, like in a kind of, um, uh, uh, an engagement with the, with the industry. It's, you know, it's, it's not just somebody who's kind of, um, like going around, like throwing out business cards because they, they decided to pick up a camera or they decided to sure, be an actor yeah. that week or whatever. And that's fine too. Like, and that, that happens like, but, um, it's much more fun and engaging when it's a, a, a real, like kind of human. When it's uh, a conversation. Yeah. It's a chat. Yeah. Like it's a yeah. chat. It's a chat. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I think that's a brilliant note to end on. Um, so I just want to say thanks a million again for taking the time and, uh, you, and well done and congratulations on all the amazing work. And uh, and yeah, it's always been an absolute pleasure to, to work on your projects as well. Yeah, likewise, yeah. likewise. It's been, and it's been uh, and like a genuine ed- like pleasure and education working with you as well. And uh, I'm oh, sure it was, through, it, was through, it was through you that I, that I got into the, the acting classes and um, and yeah, it opened up that, that whole, whole other world for me as well. So yeah, yeah. And right. if there's any directors listening, take acting classes for the love of God. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the best thing yeah. ever. And I don't, I don't understand why everyone is, why everyone isn't doing it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening. And if you'd like to know more about Sean, check out his website at www.seanoconnor.com. That's S-H-A-U-N-O-C-O-N-N-O-R.com. And if you're looking for a quick, easy and affordable professional actor's website, check out www.mysite.actor. Thanks for listening.